My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today we will learn about custom properties. Um, last time in the previous tutorial we learned an example of um, how to make sensors change the layer of the hero and also how to make some ties invisible. And our code was a little bit uh, dirty. <laughs> We had a lot of duplication here. Uh, invisible tile 1 set visible false, invisible tile 2 set visible false, and so on. And we also duplicate the behavior of every sensor. So this really doesn't scale. Um, if you have a big map with a lot of bridges and complicated platforms, you don't want to uh, have to copy paste uh, this code over and over again. Um, so there are multiple ways actually to factorize your code uh, to get a, a little bit cleaner code but um, one of them in, is to use custom properties. Um, previously in some tutorials we used names so for instance you can quite easily factorize this using names if you want all uh, entities whose names start with that you can do a loop uh, for tile in map get entities and this function map get entities can take the prefix of entities that you want so all these entities you want them to be invisible and that's it so that's already a little bit better um, the only downside is that we are real relying on names and we'll see how to make it better with custom properties today and it's pretty much the same with uh, the events here, the, the unactivated events. Um, first you can see that this function is exactly the same as this one. So we can kind of group them and actually define them only once, probably in a local variable of type function. We can call it layer up sensor on activated. And um, yeah, it takes the sensor as a parameter. And we want to assign, well, first let's copy paste the only line. And instead of redefining the same code to, on, on both sensors here, sensor and sensor 2, we can just assign to layer up sensor the unactivated field equals this value of type function and it will be equivalent. Same for the second one. And we can remove a lot of code already. So both sensors will be assigned with the same unactivated value, which is this value of type function. Okay? Um, so we did that already in the past, in, in some tutorials. And normally we will do well, we can do a loop actually, same as here. Instead of layer up sensor, layer up sensor two, we can do for layer um, for sensor in. Um, let's get all the entities whose name start with layer up sensor, and just assign this value. So that's even better because this time. Our code wo works no matter how many uh, such sensors we have in our map. Similarly to here, uh, our Lua code no longer assumes that there are exactly five invisible tiles, invisible tiles and two uh, layer up sensors. Okay, And we should do the same for the layer down sensors. Layer down sensor, this time it's layer minus one, layer down sensor, and layer down sensor. Okay, um, so so far I haven't introduced yet custom properties, which will be the, the actual topic of this uh, tutorial. But let's see if it still works. I have improved the code a little bit, now it's more generic. And like I said, it, it no longer relies on the exact number of um, 
sensor in, in tiles that we have. So we could e more easily now extend the map and um, add some other places with sensors that will change the layer without having to touch the code of our map again. So uh, it's kind of nice already. But there are some downsides in relying on the names of our entities. Um, first, I, I think it's quite easy to to go wrong when with names. Then, if you you can imagine that in some in some complex games, there are some entities that would have multiple behaviors, but they can only have one name. So, uh, how do you do some more advanced uh, behaviors? Uh, so yeah, that's a, a little bit of a, a downside. The performance impact is actually not so bad because our uh, well, look, looking for entities from their prefix is actually quite fast in in the engine. Um, but uh, yeah, we can do better still with custom properties. So, uh, how does it work? Every entity sensors, I mean, except uh, static tiles because they are not accessible in Lua, but every entity has a lot of fields and they have this table called user properties. And in user properties, you can actually add uh, any key value pair that you want. And basically anything that is not uh, built in in the engine here, if you need some other stuff, uh, you can put some properties here and then it's your responsibility to uh, have some script that we will read them and do something with them. Um, so an example of that is maybe we can start by our invisible tiles here. Maybe we can do a property that will be called um, visible. So. Uh, let's just only show dynamic ties to be sure that we find them. We can put a property here, visible, and the value will be false. So keys are always strings and values are also always strings. There is no uh, choice of the type in, in values uh, yet. Maybe one day there will. So it will be the string false and not the boolean false. So it's the only tricky thing. Visible false. And I want to do that for all my tiles that I want to be invisible. And then I can actually remove their names because we will no longer rename, uh, rely on the names of our entities. Visible false. Visible false. Visible false. Okay, let's show everything again. Um, and this time, instead of getting all entities whose names start with invisible tiles, tile, I can get all entities of type dynamic tile. And I want to get their property. Um, get property. So the property called visible. If there is no such property, then it will return nil. And I want to compare that with actually the string false, like we saw, and set visible false. And if visible was set to true, well, then we have nothing to do because tiles are already visible uh, initially. And yeah, the only uh, problem, the only potential issue is that it's easy to go wrong and to um, to forget that values are only strings in this property API. So it's actually not a Boolean, but it's really the string false. Uh, let's see if it works. Our tiles should still be invisible. Okay, cool. Um, if you don't remember why we needed invisible tiles in the previous tutorial, it's 
because of these platform systems, we needed some invisible platforms to uh, make our layer change work. But you, you can you can check the previous tutorial if you have a doubt. Um, yeah, the topic about, about today is more about how to use custom properties than uh, than how to make these layers work. Okay, so how do we do the same for layer for our sensors? So we have some sensors that should go upward and others that should go downwards. And what we could do is actually to, if I only show sensors, okay, this one should go down. Uh, I no longer need the name. Um, maybe I still want to keep the name because it can be useful from the editor. Um, we could do uh, something like layer change and the value can be minus one. Layer change minus one. And here, layer change plus one. So just one. Layer change um, one and layer change minus one. Okay. And the only reason why I like still keeping the name here is just because when my mouse is hovering the sensor here, um, I can see its name in the status bar and it can remind me if it's layer up or layer down. But that, that's really a small detail. Um, and now how do we change our code so that uh, we rely on the custom property instead of the uh, name? It's a bit similar. We need to get all entities of type sensor and check their property uh, sensor. Get, well, let's put this in a local variable. Layer change equals sensor get property layer change because we called it that way in the quest editor. Oops, layer change. And um, again, the, the only place where it's easy to go wrong is to forget that this is actually a string and not a number. So you want to convert the string to a number. You can call two number sensor get property. And if, it, if it's a sensor that does not have the property, then this will return nil. And two number, if you call two number of nil, it will still be nil. So there will not be an error here. And you can just check if layer change is something else than nil. And if yes, sensor on activated equals uh, this function. And we will need to modify it a little bit. Um, this will be layer. Um, I need to pass the parameter plus one or minus one actually. Layer up sensor. Um, I could do it like this if I want. Um, sensor or, or like this. There are multiple ways to, to write it. Uh, okay, when we activate the sensor, we do that. Hero set layer, and here instead of doing plus one, I do plus layer change. So that's that's one way to do it. And then all our sensors 
that have the property will automatically get an unactivated event. And this will do plus one or minus one, or even plus two, or you can do, you can put other values here <laughs> if you have some different cases, I don't know. Oh, I forgot something. I forgot then. Let me show you the code. Okay. Looks like it still works. I'm able to get on the bridge and to go downward again. And now I'm under the bridge. Okay, so the benefit of this uh, of these custom properties is that you can put additional things that you don't have built in. You can have your entities um, get get more information. Basically, you are not limited to only one custom properties. You can put a list of key value pairs. They are all strings and yeah, the, the typical usage is to write your your code only once and then you can add some entities and put custom proper, properties to them and um, yeah, it will just work and you you don't have to modify your code every time you, you add a new, uh, a new bridge or a new sensor or a new dynamic tile that you want to be invisible. So yeah, and it's it's cleaner than the the name based approach um, because yeah name you, you you can I mean names are are a little bit it's a bit it's a little bit dirty to to rely only on names and it's a little bit fragile and you can you you can put only one behavior in you can you could encode only one behavior in name inside names. Uh, except if you do some really, really uh, ugly code, but uh, <laughs> yeah, custom properties are, are more flexible. Um, there are still some improvements that you will probably want because all of this is still only local to one particular map. And how would you do uh, if you want this to apply to other maps as well. For instance, if you want also to make this uh, ladder here uh, behave like this one. Um, for now, you still have to duplicate code. We'll see later, probably in the next tutorial, um, how to factorize this code even more to make it work globally in all maps. Um, and it will be even more powerful. Okay, uh, I guess that's it for today. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Bye.